lanes I've been driving this train Years in this lane, there's no stop in this flame Cause I came to the game and I changed it to play How I like rearranged it to my own domain Yeah, I got what it takes, made lots of mistakes Taking shots, skipping breaks, feeling lost, feeling great Popping off, singing straight, never stop, never changed All the squad here to play and I've got something to say, yeah I work hard each and every day I get lost in the words I say I don't push pause, no I push play I won't stop till I make a change What's up freaks? Welcome to Steve Knows episode number 11 Today we're going to talk about different areas of leadership but specifically mission, accomplishment and decision making Sometimes on the fly, sometimes split second decision. We give you some real world examples of some things that have just happened recently for us in the LTD training. That's a leadership and team development training program that we do. Kind of a crazy story. We're going to get to that in a second. But first, Steve Knows is a live show on how to have a no excuses business mindset guiding you to better leadership, communication, teamwork, and problem solving so you can make more money with strategy and structure so you can operate to dominate on the battlefield of business. This is for entrepreneurs, business owners, managers, leaders, anyone who's looking to take their, their career, their business, their company to the next level, to a new level. This is, this is for teams maybe that want to level up or even struggling with the development, the teaching, the training of your team where this show will help you to guide them to be even better leaders, communicators, and problem solvers so that they're going to be prepared for what we call the battlefield of business and begin treating the business as if it's their own. I got you on a bunch of different cameras. So if you see me looking around, that's because we have multiple cameras going on here on all the different social medias and recordings. And the goal is to get everyone on your team to treat the business as if it's their own and to have leadership up and down the chain of command, leadership laterally across the business. Everyone should consider themselves a leader. And where it's all about, again, you hear me say all the time, the battlefield of business. Building your team and preparing them and well equipping and arming them for the battlefield of business. Today we're specifically going to talk about mission accomplishment. So let's first start off about mission accomplishment in the military, specifically in the Marine Corps, the leadership objectives. The, the two leadership objectives are number one, mission accomplishment, and number two is true welfare. So mission accomplishment is above true welfare when we're talking about the leadership objectives. Mission accomplishment, again, is the primary objective of Marine Corps leadership, getting the job done, finishing the fucking mission, getting it going. That's what it's all about. So... This, is, this requires a, a goal-oriented approach. So a, a leader must you need to identify the long-term goals of the team, the short-term steps the organization needs to, to accomplish a mission. And if you don't know, myself and my Navy SEAL partner, we run a, a program called the LTD. That's a leadership and team development training where we travel all around the country and we train and coach Companies and their entire teams, usually their leadership teams from the CEOs, the VPs, all on down in the organization on leadership, teamwork, communication, problem solving, critical thinking, having that work-life balance or whatever the hell you want to call it. I like to call it work-life synergy, work-life satisfaction, work-life discipline, work-life domination, or how about just fucking work-life happiness. That's a huge part of what we work into the LTD training for these companies. But the mission the number one leadership objective is mission accomplishment. And that's, up, again, above troop welfare. So let me tell you a quick a, a story about the LTD, the program that we run, which is, is all over the country. So first we were in New York, flying into Newark, then going into New York City, staying in New York City for an event we were going to do in Queens, New York, out on the beach, starting at 5 a.m. So we got there at like 3.30 a.m. to get early to get set up, a 5 a.m. start time, 5 to 7 a.m., on the beach, having fun, about 50, 50 individuals for the high performance training, HPLT, and it was freaking awesome. It was out there as the sun came up, we got tons of freaking brutal, the, the water was pretty cold, but just a, a brutal training session. 
just getting after it. They just performed. They kicked ass. They had a bunch of fucking fun. They pushed themselves. It was awesome. So that was that. Was that. But right when we finished that, we couldn't stay for that entire event because we had a, an event the next day for the LTD, for the leadership and team training in South Carolina. So we're sitting in New York City and I don't even remember the day of the week. It was, I think it was a Friday. A Friday, imagine that, a Friday afternoon trying to get from Manhattan out of the city through the Lincoln Tunnel or wherever the hell we, whatever tunnel, maybe the Holland Tunnel we took even into to get to Newark Airport. We're sitting there in traffic. It's not going anywhere. Literally taking 10, 15, 20 minutes to go a block, to just move a block in Manhattan. It was fucking brutal traffic. So we're leaving for the airport very early. Now we get an alert on the phone. There's a delay. There's storms coming in. There's a delay. We had about an extra two hours to get there. So like, all right, we could take our time, grab a little, a little something, some food for the road. We're going to be stuck in traffic for a while. Go fill up on gas while we can. We get all that done. And... Another text message comes in from the airline saying, well, your flight has been undelayed. Like, holy fuck. I've never had a flight get undelayed. A delay, and then another message saying that your flight is now undelayed. Now it's back on track to leave on time. So now we're like, shit, we're cutting this close. We may not even make it on time because we weren't rushing anymore because we thought we had this over two hours, like a two and a half, almost three hour delay. We were kind of taking our time, not stressing the traffic. Now we started to navigate all this traffic. We're still in Manhattan. Didn't even make it into the tunnel yet. Not even to New Jersey yet. Not moving, not going anywhere. Like barely going to make it there on time with this traffic. Another message comes in because we have to fly now from South, from Newark, New Jersey down to South Carolina for an event we had, a full day event we had the very next day for Charleston Taekwondo, which is just the top, they have six locations now, just rapidly growing company, massively successful company down there in Charleston. Martial arts, with kids programs, after school programs, Freaking awesome setup they have going there. So we're going down there to, teach, to coach their team and work with their team on leadership, teamwork, communication, problem solving, work-life balance like we're talking about. But we're stuck in traffic and now we're barely going to make the flight. Sit in traffic. All right, we need to stay calm. Figure this out. Just, just keep trucking away in the damn New York City traffic. Another message comes in from the airline. Your flight has been canceled. Like, holy shit. We've automatically rescheduled for a flight the following morning. Now that's obviously not going to work. We had to be in South Carolina the following morning at 8 a.m. start time for the event, which we want to get always be there at least an hour early to set up, get audio visual set up and all that stuff and mic checks and whatever else. So we need to get there an hour early. So a flight at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m., whatever time it was, was not going to make it, was not going to work. So we're looking, looking for other airlines. There was another flight that possibly we could have had at 10 p.m. Now just keep, just follow me here. Because this, there is a lesson here to be learned on mission accomplishment and decision making. Just decisiveness, which is a, a major aspect of leadership. So we needed to, that we looked up some flights. There was a flight that possibly, maybe we can get at 10 p.m. that night. And would get us there with a few hours to spare into South Carolina. But it looked like there was only maybe one or two seats. And then if we did take that 10 p.m. flight and there was any kind of delay, we'd have no chance of making this event. Myself and, and Ray looked at each other and had to make a split that second decision sitting there in bumper to bumper traffic in New York City at a, I don't remember what time it was now, probably about four, no, probably about 3 p.m. The event was 8 a.m. the next morning. While we're sitting there in traffic, pull up real quick. How long would it take to drive to Charleston, South Carolina? Take about 12 and a half hours, a little more with the traffic here we had in New York City and some traffic along the way. Like, fuck it, our only guarantee our only way to be guaranteed to get there on time is to make this split second decision right now on the, in the fucking moment to say, screw the airport, screw the flight. We're just not even going to worry about the flight and just hit the road and drive the over 12 and a half hours down to South Carolina. So that's what we did. Jumped. We still took the, the Holland Tunnel, got across into New Jersey, drove down the whole length, most of the length of the country, made it there at about 6.30 a.m., or six, maybe 6 a.m. got there by the time we got there after stopping for food and gas and whatever else. Got there about 6 a.m. and maybe 5.30 a.m. Had to be at the place at 7. Got about 30 minutes, 35 minutes of a, of a little, quick, quick sleep for the night. Got up and showed up an hour early. Got everything set up and fucking 
performed as if there was a full night's sleep. Now, is that an ideal situation to get that little amount of sleep? Obviously not. You want to be sharp and focused, especially in an event, but that was our only chance of making it. That is a, a, an ultimate example of mission accomplishment in your business. Like, this was an event that was scheduled for about five months already. We had our other business partner, Bedros, who was meeting us down there. He was speaking for the last hour and a half of the event. So he had an early morning flight, which he was all good for and wasn't affected by this because he wasn't coming the night before. He didn't need to speak until the end of the event. So we were months, months of, and, and this whole, the whole team, the whole company was shutting down operations just for this event that day. And we had Bedros flying in to speak at the event with us. This team was looking forward to it. They're, they're at a, a, a critical juncture in their business that, they, that this was a, a crucial time that they were needed this and were looking forward to this type of training, type of leadership and, and the drills that we're putting them through. They, they were just a, a time that were hungry for this and there was no way we could fucking let them down. There was no way that we can let them down, that we can fail them. It was scheduled for months. So... We drove the 12 and a half hours, made it there, pretty much drove through the night, crashed around a half hour in the hotel room, got out there early, set everything up, and made it happen. Massively successful event, was freaking awesome, great engagement, awesome stuff, great team. That the, the growth that they're going to have down there at Charleston Taekwondo is going to be fucking ridiculous. But the one of the turn that we start, I started with the Marine Corps leadership objectives. There's also, the Marine Corps has 14 leadership principles. I'm just going to tell you what they all are real quick and it's judgment, justice, dependability, integrity, decisiveness, tact, initiative, enthusiasm, bearing, unselfishness, courage, knowledge, loyalty, and endurance. And a huge part of the LTD training that we do is we take aspects, we, we take what we call the three battlefields, the, the battlefield, the business field, and the home field, the three battlefields of life, and combine all that together. So we take some military leadership experience, entrepreneurship, business leadership experience, and just life as a, as a husband, a father, and, ru and a running a family, and take all that and combine it into the, 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 what we are providing and the, the, the content of what we're, the, the, we're servicing these teams on and coaching and training and working with them in a, in a coaching relationship with. So military leadership is a huge part of it. Instilling that into their teams, combined with the entrepreneurship and the home field, Putting it all those battlefields together. So out of those 14 Marine Corps traits, like just think of this situation of judgment, having to make a judgment call. Is this the right thing to do? Should we do this? Should we wait for the, the time of 10 p.m. and take a risk and then maybe get delayed or maybe we both don't get on the flight? It's a judgment call. We had to make the judgment call and decisiveness. It like it was down to like the minutes. Like if we don't get on the road now towards South Carolina, we'll never get there in time with enough time to set up and we do need to get there early. So it was a, a, a decisiveness call. There's two of those 14 leadership principles. Dependability is another one of the 14 leadership principles of the Marine Corps. Dependability. We need to be dependable. We had taught, we had meetings about this. We've sent all the surveys. We did all the due diligence, all the preparation, locked on. We've gone through dirt dives. We rehearsed it. We practiced our, the full day of events. We've gone through, we, Massive amounts of run-throughs, dry runs, and just attacking it, dirt diving it. So much work put into it. We needed to be dependable. We needed to fucking deliver on what we said we were going to deliver on. Like in the project. We say, I'm a man of my word. I make a promise and I keep it. Like we needed to be men of our word, which is the dependability of the leadership principles. We needed to show up there. Whatever it took. If it meant not being able to sleep, and then still having to show up. Not, letting any, not even letting it be known that we didn't sleep. Of course, we did use this as an opening, opening kind of lesson on getting the job done, mission accomplishment, seeing things through to the end. Everything I'm talking about here was basically our opening, opening words to the team. But if we didn't say it, they never would have known we only had a half hour sleep because we're showing up there. We're going to be dependable. And initiative. Initiative is another one of the leadership principles. We had to take the initiative. We couldn't sit and call, it, call, it, call it the owner of the company up. Or call our other partner up that's meeting us down there and say, what do you think? Should we do this? Should we do that? Had to be decisiveness. We had to take initiative and just take fucking action. It's talk. We're talking about making bold moves, taking big freaking risks. I mean, so many variables go into this. 
but it has to be like, bam, all right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to commit to it. We're going to make it happen and then do it with enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is another leadership principle. We had to do this enthusiasm. We had to hit the road with enthusiasm. So on the drive there, we got a chance to talk business. We got a chance to work thing, get to know each other a little bit better in this 12 and a half hour drive. We got a chance to go through the entire event two or three more times so we can nail it down, fine tune some things, go through some slideshows and things like that, like working. It was a working trip, like weaponize your travel. That's another thing, weaponize your travel. Huge thing, we may, we may make a whole separate show on that, weaponizing your travel. And enthusiasm, bearing, we had to keep our bearing, we had to keep our military bearing, right? We could have freaked out, like, holy shit, what are we going to do? The flight got canceled. Could have totally freaked out, could have canceled the event, got gone crazy, got all emotional and all this other shit, but no. Stay in the green, stay focused, stay centered, emotional discipline, emotional resiliency. Now, the difference between emotional discipline and emotional resiliency, emotional discipline is the ability to stay centered, stay in the middle, stay on the green, cut the peaks and valleys. But you're not going to be perfect. You're a fucking human. So you're going to get knocked off course. The universe is going to bitch slap you from time to time. You're going to get knocked, kicked in the nuts, knocked sideways from, from, the, from the day, from the earth, from the world, from the universe. Resiliency is after you get knocked off and break that emotional discipline, after something, the universe breaks through that emotional discipline and knocks you off that balance, either above or below in those peaks and valleys, emotional resiliency is your ability to bounce back, ability to bounce back into the center and get recentered. Most of this one is to be able to stay in the center. Most of the agency is to be able to get back to the center when you get knocked off, which you will often. Like just because we talk about this stuff and train this stuff and teach this stuff doesn't mean we're not fucking human. Of course we're going to get knocked off. That's your bearing. That's maintaining your bearing, your direction, your composure, focused, your professionalism. That is your bearing. Unselfishness. We have to be unselfish about it. Like we had a team that was waiting for us and we had to provide a service for it's going to suck for us. We're going to have to drive through the freaking night, not get any sleep, go straight to an event and have to then train. That was a, that's a, that was a long day. If you talk about the hour that we're there early, the afterwards, and we have a, we do a dinner event afterwards. We're talking about a, a 15, 16 hour day with zero sleep. After driving straight through the night, after just finishing a day, that day of that beach event, we had to get up at about 2, 30, 3 a.m. to get to the beach early on time. So we're already we're on short sleep, traveling all the time. Like, we had to be unselfish about it. There were people, it's, it's a higher calling. We do it, we do this shit because this is just our calling. This is what we're meant to do. The, the coaching that we do, whether it's the project, like the Squire program we just did this Saturday out in Maine, the LTD where we're traveling around the country and training teams, the one-on-one -on -one coaching that we're doing, the, the fitness and nutrition coaching. This is all towards making people fucking better. It's almost, it's a higher calling that I just feel is a duty and obligation after some of the fucked up things I've done in my life in the past, and it's, it's like almost having to make up for it, pay back that, that karmic debt to balance out the scales in life. It's an unselfishness, and that's a leadership principle of the Marine Corps. Loyalty. Loyalty is another leadership principle that was demonstrated with this one story. Like this, that's, that's why after we did this, I was like, you know what? This is going to be so many teaching lessons so many coaching points that we're going to have just for this team in South Carolina and for future events and for live shows like this. Like, think of all that that was demonstrated during this one circumstance, this one situation. Because it's, it's one thing to sit and study military leadership and stoic philosophy or whatever it is for you, let's say the Bible or whatever else. Or all these fucking books that you see behind me out here, hundreds of books behind me. It's one thing to read them and study them and even learn them and soak them in, but that's all fucking useless if when it comes down to it and the universe fucking backhands you to actually be able to implement that stuff and put it to use and actually practice it and get your sets and reps in it. Sometimes you're going to fuck it up, but it's useless if you're not actually implementing it. Speed of implementation and loyalty is one of those principles. That's why it's just it's just awesome when, we, when I started breaking down all the elements that went into this, all the factors that went into this and the lessons learned and the ability to implement all these things, not just talk about military leadership. Sure, we can go around the country and talk about it and teach it. But are you actually demonstrating? Or are you a fucking fraud? Are you actually talking with your feet? Not just yapping away at your gums like some people do on the internet. Endurance. Endurance is another one of the leadership principles. Endurance is another one of the leadership principles. 
So it took some endurance to wake up at 2.30 a.m., do a beach training PT, do some events there, travel to an airport, get screwed over, have to drive 12 and a half hours, go straight to a 15, 16 hour day after that, and then wake up the next morning at 3 a.m. to catch a 5.45 a.m. flight from South Carolina back to California. That takes endurance. Endurance is a leadership principle. That's why when it comes down to your fitness and your training, I just had a call today with a, with a guy for the project and he said that since he started his business four or five years ago or how many ever years ago it was, he really fell off track with his fitness. He put all his time and energy into his business. In just the last few months, he finally was able to start getting some lifting in again. Endurance is a leadership principle. You need training and fitness and health and nutrition and lifting weights and having durability and taking care of your damn self is a non-negotiable when you're running a business, when you're running a company, when you're a manager for anyone. Like you need, you are your most important client. You need to take care of your own shit first. You need to get your own house, your own actual physical fucking house in order before you're able to go and lead someone else. Lead your damn self before you can lead someone else. Four dimensions of leadership. Four dimensions. Most people only think that they can jump straight to the second dimension and that's it, or they think there's only three dimensions. So the first dimension is lead yourself. Once you lead yourself, you can earn the right to lead other people. People just think they could just lead other people and that's it. I'm just a leader. I'm leading other people. Having just a bunch of followers. That is not great leadership. That's only the second dimension. And people skip the first dimension of leading yourself first. They go straight to leading other people when they didn't even earn the fucking right to lead other people because they're not leading themselves first, not taking care of their own shit first, getting their own shit together first. So first you got to lead yourself. Then you can lead other people. Then those people you're leading, you need to develop them into future leaders themselves. And that's still only the third dimension. And most people, if they're going, will stop there. But there is a fourth dimension. I call it the freak dimension. And that is to develop future leaders who also develop future leaders. Now that's when you're talking about some force multiplying shit. That's when you're talking about making a massive fucking impact. That's when you're talking about exponential growth and exponential impact that one person can make on this fucking planet. Everyone, everyone says you wanna make an impact and all this other stuff. That's how you freaking do it, right there. Is take it to that freak dimension, that fourth freak dimension of leadership, of personal development. And there's a fourth dimension to most things that people leave out. So again, that this situation with getting down to this LTD event that Ray and I had in South Carolina, it demonstrated so many of the 14 leadership principles. Judgment, dependability, decisiveness, initiative, enthusiasm, bearing, unselfishness, loyalty, endurance, like holy shit, eight of the 14 in this one situation, implemented like in real time, in the real world, in a real life leadership situation, going to teach a leadership course, like fucking awesome stuff right here. That's why it, this shit gets me excited. It gets me excited to freaking talk about this stuff. We also have the 11 leadership, uh, 11 principles. Oh, sorry, those are the 14 leadership traits. Any, by the way, the leader, there's also the 14 Leadership, the principle, 11 principles of leadership. Set the example. We were for sure setting the example by jumping on the road, getting in the trenches, and demonstrating those other traits. And ensuring that the task is accomplished. Making sound and timely decisions. That falls obviously right in line with the decisiveness of those 14 traits. The principle of make sound and timely decisions. Doing the math. Uh, and we're talking about on the spot, like literally in the moment, right there, checking the flights, bam, no good. All right, let's drive, let's do it. Look at each other, you down for it, check. Let's roll. Put in the navigation, see what we're working with. All right, it's doable, let's make it happen. Done, done deal, we're gonna be there on time, we're gonna make this happen. That was our only way to do it. Another leadership principle that it was demonstrated here was seek responsibility and take responsibility for your actions. Now, we couldn't control the canceled flights. We couldn't take, we couldn't take, we weren't, we weren't responsible for that happening, but we still had to hold ourselves accountable for making it to this event one way or the other. So seek responsibility and take responsibility for your actions. And there's a difference between responsibility and accountability if you don't know the difference. Responsibility is whatever you are tasked with doing, whatever you need to get done. Whatever's asked of you, whatever's your duty and obligation is your responsibility. Now, accountability is answering for what you need to get done. Answering for those responsibilities is accountability. Now holding yourself accountable for those things that you're responsible for. There is a slight difference there. 
And this was demonstrated. Seek responsibility and take responsibility for your actions. Not just taking responsibility after the fact, but seeking it. Where can I take responsibility? Where can I step the fuck up and lead and actually practice the shit I'm talking about? Because I'm trying to see if there's any messages on here, because I know I saw some messages pop up here on the Instagrams. So many, so much scroll in there. It's hard to come up with something. Anyway, all right. So, seek responsibility. So, some pop ups coming up, but I can't keep up the messages or scrolling. Seek responsibility and take responsibility for those actions was another one of the leadership principles that was demonstrated in this situation. So, the point here, we're talking about mission accomplishment. Like whatever it takes to accomplish a mission, that is your number one objective, even above troop welfare. It's a close second. Of course, you need to take care of your people and care about your people and show them that and show appreciation and gratitude and, and get to know them and take care of them. But that comes second to accomplishing the damn mission. Mission accomplishment above troop welfare. Of course, team welfare, individual welfare is very important and you need to be every being a servant, serving your team, servant leadership, whatever you want to call it, being empathetic. Of course, all important stuff, but that is still second to mission accomplishment because all stuff is useless if you're not accomplishing the fucking mission. It's just the way it is and what needs to get done. Now, this is all part of, and it's why it was so perfect and fitting that this was actually happening on our way to a leadership and team development training course. Like, perfect demonstration of it. Awesome, so many like lessons and journaling that, that took place after this. And on the LTD, if you didn't know that myself and Ray, we travel around the country, we do this leadership and team development training. And it's for teams, owners, CEOs, a lot of times for the leadership team, the higher level leadership team, some, we've done some big companies out there, big organizations, and then small private companies like this Taekwondo in, in Charleston. But the, the LTD is for business owners, for executives, for managers and their teams struggling with the daily development of, of teaching and training of their teams where we will guide them on how to become better leaders, better communicators, better problem solvers. So again, that they're pre prepared for the battlefield of business and they will begin treating the business as if it's their own, allowing you or the owner to then focus on the growth and the scale of the company. Now imagine if your team operated with this leadership that we're talking about, these leadership traits and leadership principles like we're talking about in the military and had a mindset of an entrepreneur instilled into your business all at the same time while having that work-life balance from the home field, bridging the gap from the home field to the business field. Imagine that. Imagine the team operated with the leadership of a, of a military general, with the teamwork and communication of a Navy SEAL, with the discipline, the mindset, and the motivation of a United States Marine. Imagine how different your team would be. Imagine the force multiplying effect that would be. Bridging the gap between the business field, the home field, and the battlefield, and putting it all together to just create a bunch of savage servants on your team that work together as one unified team, one team, one fight. Just think of the difference that would make on your team. Just think about it. And that's what the LTD is all about. So if you have any questions about the LTD, want any more information on it, or think it might be a good fit for you or your team or your company or your business, just shoot me a message or just respond to this and put a comment down below or just, just shoot me a message. You can also check out the ltdtraining.com. Check out the ltdtraining.com and it has tons of information about the LTD there and applications you can fill out if you think this would be good for your team. We travel all around the country or you can come to us here to Southern California to our train, our private training center, our learning center. We have a, a gym here. We get workouts in the morning together before the event. It's awesome. We've had teams send their teams out to us here in California, or we could travel out to you all over the country and even some certain parts of the world for the LTD training. But again, mission accomplishment, troop welfare, developing future leaders, but first developing your damn self, leading yourself first, because you are your most important client when it comes down to it. Get your own shit together, get your own house in order, lead yourself so that you can lead others and then develop future leaders and then develop future leaders who develop future leaders. That is the fourth freak dimension of leadership, of personal development. It all ties in together, and that's all parts of the LTD. 
And all these lessons that we learn in this situation are things that we will drill and, and drill into the DNA and the fucking bones of your team so they start treating the business as if it's their own. If you have any questions about LTD, send me a message, shoot me a message. I got to get rolling. In case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses. I feel nauseous, believe me. Never had a lot of shit come easy. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to rise.